Welcome to the EKG Guy if this is your first time. I'm glad you're joining us today and it's a good day. I have a special offer for everyone um, that we've been doing and I want to provide it to all of you, okay? So I think you'll like this. And so what we have is you may know that outside of the YouTube videos, uh, which there's about 400 or even more at this point, there's another 160 plus videos that make up our comprehensive EKG course separate from the YouTube videos okay so I know there's a course on there but there's higher quality more thorough more detailed practice EKG videos okay so from beginner to advanced level uh, that is now available now we're using it for our training here at Mayo Clinic in Rochester. Uh, there's the medical school that's now incorporating it, especially during this pandemic, right? Something that was very unexpected. Online learning is becoming a new solution and avenue to help our professionals grow and mature in their field. So there's a number of residencies as well. Uh, medical schools, medical pro programs, our electrophysiologists and techs here as well using it. Okay, so it's for all. If you're a beginner, if you're an advanced interpreter, it's for you, okay? So what I'm gonna do uh, as we move forward is I'm gonna show you a, a quick video, and then after that, I'm gonna show you everything that's incorporated into this course, okay? You'll see from beginning to end the topics, and you'll see that you go from a beginner to an advanced interpreter with one resource. So I know there's a number of introductory courses out there, uh, books and even texts that are more uh, maybe expert level, um, but I struggled. I found it very inefficient using these, and I really want to make sure that you do not have that uh, inefficient process that I went through to learning EKGs. Okay, It's taken me uh, a very long time to get to this level, and I don't want you to have that same issue. Okay, So hopefully this replaces that. You know, I know there's a number of introductory books that are popular, okay? Um, but I'm going to tell you that they are not sufficient, okay? And if you're looking to advance or if you're looking to actually become clinically relevant and help your team in the clinical setting, you need to know more, okay? So, um, and what this offer is going to entail, okay, I'm already telling you ahead of time, is that it'll allow you and your friend or a friend to get the whole package, the whole course um, for $40, okay, total meaning pretty much $20 each. And I think it's a little less than that when you put it in. All right, and you're gonna use this code videos on checkout. Now, before I start showing you all that's involved in this course, I wanna show you a quick video and then we'll get to it. Learning how to interpret EKGs can be a struggle when just starting. Sometimes it's difficult to know where to even begin. Everything appears like squiggly lines on a page. When searching for resources, most introductory books provide little clinical relevance or practical knowledge. On the other hand, ECG textbooks and the medical literature are often too advanced for a beginner. The entire process from beginner to advanced interpreter becomes a very inefficient process. Ultimate EKG Breakdown fills this gap in ECG education, taking you from the beginner to advanced interpreter level with a single resource. More importantly, you will finally be able to explain and understand why you see what you see on the EKG. Start to feel comfortable the next time you are handed an EKG and become a key team member in patient care. The course includes 175 plus page, full color course manual with corresponding detailed lectures for all 150 plus lessons in the book, your own pair of calipers, and over five hours of practice clinical cases. It's all you'll ever need. Thank you for trusting the EKG Guy with your EKG learning needs and helping us transform ECG education to deliver better patient care. We are the largest, fastest growing EKG community and resource in the world. EKG.md So hopefully that gave you an idea of what this course and why I developed this course, okay? And now I want to take you through what topics are incorporated because I think it'll give you a good idea that there is really no course out there. And if there is, I have yet to find it that takes you all the way through this from beginner to advanced level, okay? And so let's go through the topics involved. So what we do is we start with the basics, you know, and I really want to make sure not that you have a deep foundation of cardiac anatomy, but a basic understanding, 
okay so we start with the anatomy the circulation uh, because if you know these this helps us localize uh, different infarcts for instance it may be a right coronary artery occlusion you know so really knowing your anatomy is helpful and we go that into more detail when we get to the ischemic portion but early on we look at the anatomy okay we look at the conduction system of the heart, the main focus of what we're doing. We look at what the action potential and automaticity. So what are the electrolytes, the ions that are passing through to allow for conduction and impulses to propagate through the conduction system? We looked at vectors, electrical access, okay, something that some people struggle with. I want to make sure you understand why you see what you see on the EKG. And that's why this course was developed. Uh, you'll see electrodes, the standard leads. We go through the right and posterior leads, okay? Making sure you understand the EKG paper, okay? The standard EKG, localizing leads, basic terms. We look at the cardiac cycle and formation. And you may notice stars along the side, okay? Like these stars here. And what those stars represent are these high yield topics. There are 75 high yield topics, okay? And that's about maybe 13 hours of video, okay? The rest of the course is over 30 hours, but if you want the high yield content, I recommend you do those ones. And then after that, we go through the P wave, so different segments, okay? We look at intervals, determining regularity, rate, uh, access in the frontal plane, transitional zone. What is R wave progression, okay? So really things, as you can see, the basics are a lot of things that you would look at any introductory book and they would not mention some of these, okay? So, and that's all we have in the first 31 lectures. And then we start looking at rhythms, okay? We break it down into sinus, atrial, AV junction, nodal rhythms and ventricular rhythms so you learn all about them okay and one thing that you should note so how about this sinal atrial exit block if you look at introductory books they probably don't talk about that okay but I want you to know that we look at the pathophysiology the clinical significance of the rhythm and uh, as well as what we actually see on the EKG okay so it's a connecting why we see what we see that's the key portion of this course now, when we look at junctional, notice that we look at AV nodal reentrant tachycardia, WBW, LGL, AV nodal uh, reentrant tachycardia. Okay, so the different forms of these as well. You will not find any beginner book that talks about these. Okay, so that's more of an advanced level, and obviously not the starred ones, but certainly things that can get you to that level. We look at the ventricular rhythms, as you can see, what is Brugatus and Joseph's signs in ventricular tachycardia? What is reentrant ventricular tachycardia? This is one of the most common ones we see in ischemia. So knowing why that comes about, okay, knowing that there's maybe a unilateral block that propagates or does not allow for the cycle to go through and results in that, okay? So torsades, a number of other rhythms here, pacemaker rhythms, we look at chamber enlargement in part three, so left and right, as well as hypertrophy, okay? So things that you wanna know, again, how to uh, find them on the EKG, but again, understanding the pathophysiology, that is the main purpose. So not just memorizing these patterns that most courses will say, you know, do, I, do you identify AFib? Okay, well, why is that? Okay, it's not enough, especially if you wanna get to the next level. So conduction defects, we look at AV blocks, first all the way to third degree AV block, okay, some AV dissociation, interventricular conduction defects, so right and left bundle branch block, anterior fascicular blocks, posterior fascicular blocks, bifascicular blocks, what is a nonspecific conduction delay, uh, so as well. We look at myocardial ischemia and infarction, okay, and this is a great section. Why I find this a great section is because you will not find another course that designs it this way, okay? And that's because, you know, you really want to come in with a clinical perspective. Ischemic heart disease, a QMI, what are the changes we expect to see in that, okay? What are the injury currents, transmural versus subendocardial, okay? We certainly touch on those because that's still a hot topic of discussion, okay? So why do these uh, findings come about? Uh, we look at T-wave changes, Wellen syndromes, de Winter sign, uh, T-wave pseudonormalization. So things maybe you haven't heard of, but certainly touched on in here. We look at coronary artery uh, anatomy dominance. Again, the anatomy is an important part and we don't want to miss it. The vascular supply, the left ventricular anatomy, how to localize 
ischemia and a STEMI, what is a right coronary occlusion, and what findings we would expect, an LAD occlusion, a left cirque, a left main, okay, Prince metal angina, we look at conduction system vascular supply, and then what defects would cause ischemia and infarction. Scarbosa criteria, something that's popular. Many introductory books, again, will not touch on any of these things. What are the conduction defects in different forms of MI as well? Electrolytes and drugs, so digoxin, any calcium or potassium abnormality, we also look at those as well, okay? So again, very important. We look at different types of artifacts, okay, in part seven. So limb lead reversible, look at, look at how many we have here. Lots of reversal, but not only what are those reversal, but why do they occur? Why do we see what we see, okay? And that's the component, and if I'm not getting you to that level, then I have failed, okay? Again, I really want you to understand the EKG and not just memorize the things, but actually understand the changes you're seeing because that is super helpful. There's so much that we can get at the EKG beyond what we can actually see. And we're seeing that in our research with artificial intelligence, augmented EKG, where we're predicting left ventricular systolic dysfunction, a patient's age, their sex, mortality, and so much more. So, you know, and I really want you guys to start to understand that. We look at different types of muscle and motion artifact. Again, now we get into the inherited arrhythmia disorders in part eight, Brugada syndrome, the different types of Brugada syndrome, okay? Those patterns that you can see, long and short QT syndrome, arrhythmogenic right ventricular dysplasia, okay? What changes you could expect? Miscellaneous section of part nine, where we see hypothermia, intracranial hemorrhage, early repolarization, acute pericarditis and the changes, pericardial fusion, cardiac tamponade as well. And then there's this extra section, part 10, okay? And in part 10, we look at congenital heart disease, okay? And so this is quite advanced. As you can see, none of them are starred, not really high yield, but there's a lot here. Anything from atrial septal defects, um, as well as AV canal defects, patent ductus arteriosus, AP window, so that's aortopulmonary window, uh, different valvular stenosis, L, L transmission, uh, transposition of the great vessels, L kappa, left ventricular non compaction, okay, and you can see tetralogy of Fallot, truncus arteriosus, Epstein's anomaly, tricuspid atresia. Uh, hypoplastic left heart syndrome, and then some of the surgical corrections of some of these single ventricle defects with Fontan palliation. Specifically, looking at the pathophysiology, again, why we're seeing what we see, and then the EKG changes from the pathophysiology. So that's all there, okay? I'm adding a few more lectures that you'll see as bonus. There's practice as well, so that's the 160. There's also practice. I'm gonna be adding a number of new lectures. You're gonna to start to see some echo videos as well. So there's a whole lot more uh, than uh, what any other place would offer, okay? So you could probably buy a book for maybe $20 or at the cheapest. You know, most of these EKG books that are popular are about $50. You're getting this for $40 for you and a friend, okay? So obviously, if I've never heard of anything better, but if there is, I'm happy to match that. Okay, so again, the offer here uh, is limited. Okay, so while I'm putting this out there to you guys, I can only offer so many um, because there's only so many spots that are available. Okay, so again, you have all the videos. There's gonna be more videos. It's $40 for you and a friend. Okay, so pretty much each, you and a friend, $20 each, okay? You get a full year subscription. What you want to do if you want this is you can go to www.ekg.md, okay? In the upper right corner, you can click on EKG course, and you're gonna want to purchase the videos portion, okay? There's books and everything, but this one is supposed to be for the videos, and when you click on it, enter when you're going to check out enter the code videos and it'll come down and i think it actually comes out to less than 40 dollars. so uh there you go okay and you'll have access to these videos uh for a one year okay 
So hopefully that makes sense. Now, if you're having any issues and you want to reach out to us, you can reach us at the EKG guy at EKG.md. All right, so hopefully that makes sense. Okay, so this is full course, everything for $40, you and a friend enter videos on checkout and you'll start to go from beginner to advanced okay one resource and everything you'll need okay again used for many residency programs many medical programs uh, nurses our technicians here at mayo clinic uh, using this and i really thank you all for your support and i'm glad that you're finally I'm able to provide something where I struggled in, okay? And I really don't want you to have that similar struggle, okay? Again, the purpose is for you to understand why you see what you see on the EKG, all right? Well, thank you all so much for your support. I hope you have a wonderful week ahead of you.